Yo, what's up, people? Welcome back to the channel where we mix facts, logic, and a little bit of roasting to keep things real. If you're ready for some straight talk with a side of humor, you're in the right place. So, buckle up, smash that like button, and let's dive into this madness. Trust me, you're not gonna want to miss this one. I've been with a guy before who told me his net worth when I first met him was $8 million. $8 million. $8 million dollars was their net worth and i was like really and they were like yeah like with all my assets and everything it's eight mil i went to bed that night and i was like wait a minute when i first was hanging out with them they would like pull up to a drive through please listen to how embarrassing this is i would go and see someone and we'd pull up to a drive through and they'd be like two separate orders but you're telling me your net worth is eight million dollars and you're not gonna pay for my starbucks croissant you're telling me this dude's flexing an eight million dollar net worth but can't even buy you a Starbucks croissant? I guess he's only rich in Monopoly money. Bro probably counts his car's Bluetooth as one of his assets. Anyone who leads with their net worth is compensating for something else that's coming up short, if you know what I mean. Maybe he's saving those millions for more important things, like a one-bedroom apartment in today's market. But hey, at least he can afford to split the bill, right? Total baller move. There's not a day that goes by that I don't wonder why I didn't have a backup plan. Why my kids eating was dependent on a romantic relationship. This is exactly why my boyfriend gives me a $20,000 monthly allowance as a girlfriend. You need to secure a stay-at-home salary as a girlfriend from the very first date. Before you move in with a man, you tell him, it's scary out there. You have the power to make me homeless at any moment. So for my safety, security, peace of mind, and happiness, I need an allowance. If you cannot do that for me, I need to keep my career until you can. What I said to my boyfriend was, no matter how much I love and trust you, babe, most relationships end. I need to look after myself first in the case of that happening. Minimum $2,000 a month, ladies, okay? Now listen, I don't subscribe to the idea that men are trash and you shouldn't trust your husband. And I also don't believe that a man has to be rich to be a provider. However, if he cannot provide at least $2,000 a month of allowance for you, you are vulnerable. Even if he is the most perfect man on the planet and treats you amazing, what if he dies? Then what happens? All I'm saying is I love the idea of marrying somebody who is a provider and being a homemaker, but be smart. You're asking for a $20,000 monthly allowance because it's scary out there? Girl, if you need that much for peace of mind, I'm guessing your anxiety medication is made of solid gold. And $2,000 a month as the minimum? What are you, a girlfriend or a high-end Netflix subscription? If this dude needs to hand you a salary just to keep you around, Maybe the only thing scary out there is your commitment issues. And if your backup plan depends on his wallet, let's be real, it's not a relationship, it's a job with no benefits. My whole life growing up, I thought that by the age of 25, I'm going to have multiple houses with pools, multiple cars, and a big family with multiple kids. And here I am at the age of 30, cutting the toothpaste in half to get every drop out of it possible. I do exactly the same thing with my shampoo. I pour water in it and just shake it out to just get every drop out of it. I don't know if it's my Slavic side coming out of me. So you thought by 25 you'd have multiple houses, cars, and a big family? Sounds like you were planning life like it was a Sims game. Fast forward to 30, and now you're out here treating toothpaste like it's liquid gold. But hey, cutting toothpaste in half and watering down shampoo? That's not your Slavic side. That's just survival mode in today's economy. If anything, you're out here engineering solutions with that MacGyver energy. Forget the multiple houses, you're mastering the art of stretching products like you're getting a PhD in frugality. I want a submissive woman. I want a submissive woman. You want a man. You are attracted to men. Women are not the submissive gender. Men are. Historically, in fact, women are so unsubmissive that some of the earliest written rules of conduct exist to limit and suppress women's autonomy because they were not submissive enough. If you want to see the really submissive gender, look to the men. Look to all of the institutions that men have created. They all function around dominance and submission. Men are the more naturally submissive gender. They have very specifically created many places and many institutions that have historically been male-only or male-centered and marked by competition and dominance. And where there is dominance, there is what? Submission. You don't believe me? The army, fraternities, based all around submission. Look to the churches, school, workplace. So sport. are girls out here telling guys that men are the more submissive gender? 
Sounds like someone's projecting a little. Sure, men have built these institutions, but last I checked, nobody's joining a fraternity or the military because they love being bossed around. They're about leadership, competition, and proving yourself. But hey, if she really thinks men are out here craving submission, maybe she just hasn't met a dude who knows what he wants. Looks like someone's been watching too much Netflix and chilling with the wrong crowd. Something I realised recently is that some men still seem to believe that a misogynistic comment doesn't count if you personally just don't like that woman. I think in their head, a misogynist is someone who deals out misogynistic comments without any thought of whether or not the woman was deserving. Some guys think it's not misogyny if they just don't like the woman. Like, oh, I'm not sexist. I just think that one's annoying. That's like saying, I'm not a bad driver. I only crash when the road deserves it. Newsflash, if you're throwing out misogynistic comments, it doesn't matter if she stole your parking spot or said no to a date, it still counts. Acting like it's about who deserves it is just a weak excuse to be a jerk with extra steps. Alright, I'm going to say this once and I'm, I'm probably going to say it more than once, but I'm going to say it now. I want a boyfriend, but for all the selfish reasons. I want a boyfriend past 10 p.m. I want a boyfriend on the weekdays. I want a boyfriend so I can get a dog and not have to worry about it all the time. I want a boyfriend because my boobs will never be this perky again. And I'll never be this young and, and, and but for all the other reasons, like, oh, like marriage and kids, no. Ugh. Why can't I get what I So you want a boyfriend for all the perks, but none of the responsibilities? Sounds like you're shopping for a part-time emotional support animal, not a relationship. I mean, if the selling point is your perky boobs. Girl, just know gravity's undefeated, better lock him down before physics does its thing. And a boyfriend just so you can get a dog? That's basically saying, hey, I need a roommate with benefits who can walk my dog at 6am. But, at least you're honest about skipping the whole marriage and kids part. Put a finger down, psycho edition. If you put more than five fingers down, you're a psychopath. Put a finger down if you start crying when you get angry. Put a finger down if you can tell who someone is by the sound of their footsteps. Put a finger down if you like to eat ice cubes. Put a finger down if you're a Virgo, Pisces, Aries, or Gemini. Put a finger down if you can taste different kinds of water. Put a finger down if you would laugh if a little kid fell and dropped their ice cream. Put a finger down if you plan out conversations line by line before they happen. Put a finger down if you are a quiet kid. Put a finger down if you get annoyed when someone breathes too loudly. Put a finger down if you have multiple person. Okay, hold up. So now we're playing put a finger down, psycho edition. If you put more than five fingers down, guess what? You might just be one TikTok trend away from a one-way ticket to a therapist and a boyfriend just so you can get a dog. That's basically saying, hey, I need a roommate with benefits who can walk my dog at 6 a.m., but... At least you're honest about skipping the whole marriage and kids part. This dress and the effect that it has on the male race needs to be studied, okay? Because I've been wearing this dress for maybe five to six years. I've traveled three different continents in this dress, okay? And every time I step out on this dress, I'm getting marriage proposals, okay? Maybe not that intense, but what, every other day of the week. So this dress has been your secret weapon for five years, and it's racking up marriage proposals like it's a sale at Target? Sounds like you've got the ultimate dress. But let's be real, if a piece of fabric can make men drop to one knee, you might just have discovered the real reason why guys rush into relationships. Forget love at first sight. It's all about dress at first sight. You might want to patent that thing before it ends up in a scientific study on why men lose their minds over fabric. Just remember, when the dress gets all the attention, don't be surprised if you have to start carrying a ring in your pocket. Unfortunately, I had to mute the background music, but that guy is spot on, this tattoo is truly the best. As we wrap up the video, I just want to thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, that's awesome, and if not, I still appreciate you sticking around until the end. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.